is using the parameterless, the default constructor. So you cannot, for example, inject stuff into your view model. Okay? So it's not the best way, but for this, simple, for this simple demo it will do, and then later we will see a better way to do that. So now that I have an instance <coughs> of my view model inside my XAML, I can just do a binding equals static resource main view model. So I am binding the data context of this grid to my view model which allows me now to remove this element name binding because everything I do inside the grid is now, if I don't precise it explicitly, is now in reference to the view model. So I can remove my element name binding instead of going to bind to the customer's property in the view model. Let's run this code. Same as before. So now I have an MVVM application, so it should work in Blend, right? Well, unfortunately, it's not that easy. If I go to blend and reload everything, we see that we have an exception. Now, my code is executed. I know that because this message box is actually shown by my code. So what happens here? Well, let me show you a trick to find out. What you can do is actually go into your view model. Let's go in the constructor, and I'm going to put a breakpoint here. And then I'm going to attach the Visual Studio Debugger to Blend. Make sure that you select the correct solution. That's Silverlight code which is running in Blend, but that's fine. It just works. It works in WPF as well. Now, if I go into Blend, just need to refresh. So I'm just going to open the page again. And now I jump into my view model. So now I can debug, which is pretty cool. Thank you. I didn't invent that, but I think it's cool it works. I will pass the clap, you know, the applause to the Blend team. Um, so now I can see that I can create my data service. That's fine. But when I execute the next step, it's crashing. OK? So now I know exactly which code is not blendable. So I'm going to isolate this code. To do that, I'm going to check in my code if I am inside the Blend design tool or inside Cider. This property is true in Blend and in Cider. If I am inside Blend, I'm going to create 15 new customer. Notice that I'm using actually the WCF proxy. I'm creating dummy data, but that's directly the proxy with first name, last name. And then when I'm not into Blend, I'm going to connect to the real service. Now I can build. And now, no hands. No hands. Crap. <laughs> Just going to build into Blend, and here we go, OK? Sometimes you don't need to build. So now I have my 15 customers, which is great, because I can visually go ahead and change this data template. Edit current. I'm just going to do something super simple. Select the two text block and take, for example, this one. Let's do this one a little bit bigger. Well, you know. Just playing. OK, so here I have my design time data. If I run, I can run directly from Blend. Then it connects, and I get my real-time data. OK? So my application is now Blendable. Now, creating design time data in Blend, there are multiple ways to do that. One way is to use here the Data tab, where you can, for example, create a new sample data source. So here it requires quite a lot of manual work. So you have to really type the properties, or you can import from XML. That's one possibility to do this. Another possibility you can also, and that's new in, in uh, Expression Blend 4 uh, in the beta, you can actually create sample data. Let me see if I can zoom on that. Uh, create sample data from a class. So you can directly connect to your view model and create sample data. That's pretty cool. Uh, I don't have example, examples of that here, but if you check the Blend team, they are showing this demo off, so that's a pretty good thing. The way that I show is reusing really exactly the proxies that are coming, so you know what you get. All right. <clears throat> so what I showed you now, model, view, view model, and bindings, that's MVVM. Everything else is helpers 
around MVVM. Okay? So it's not that complicated, really. Okay? It's just a pattern. So those helpers that I mentioned to bridge the gap between the view and the view model, well, sometimes it would be good if the view could notify the view model that something happened. For example, a control has been clicked, and that's a good job for commands. We'll talk about that in a moment. In the other direction, it's good also sometimes if your view model can notify the view that something happened. There are multiple ways to do that. You could even do events. One way that I like is using messages. We will see an example of that. Messages are pretty good also because very often you, just, you don't have just one view and one view model, but instead you have multiple ones. And communicating from one view model to another can be quite tricky, but if you use a messaging system, it helps you a lot. Okay? So let's talk a little bit about commands. Commands, I was looking for a good definition, and you know, well, that's what I came up with. Um, Commands is something like a point of entry for a method. It allows you to expose a method as a property in your view model. So you can data bind against that. All right? It is an implementation of the iCommand interface, which has three members. The execute method, which is called when the command is invoked. The can execute method is called from time to time by the UI, and it should return true or false. True if the command is enabled, and false if the command is disabled, depending on the context of the command. And can execute changed, that's an event that you should raise when the value of can execute changes. So basically, if you see, okay, my context is changing, okay, the properties around me are changing, and now there is a risk that my command is disabled. You should raise the event to make sure. We'll see an example of that. So comments in WPF and Silverlight have one problem, one disadvantage, that they are, can actually only be used by certain controls, namely all the button-based controls, so button, toggle button, checkbox, radio button, etc., and the menu item. And only for the click event. So only when you click on those buttons will the command be executed. But thankfully, you have ways around that. We will talk about that later. Now let's say a few words about messaging. Okay, there are multiple messaging systems available. Uh, Prism has one called the Event Aggregator. Um, I'm also doing one in my MVVM Lite Toolkit and that's the one we'll see, surprise, surprise. So messaging should be simple by default. By default, it should really be simple to send a message and to receive a message. But if you want more, you should be able to open filter channels. For example, not broadcast to everybody, but instead send only to a target type. For example, the main view model sends a message targeted to the settings view model. Like this, you avoid a lot of code because you don't have to check, is this message really for me? Okay? Also, you should be able to send a message, really a direct message with a token, where you say, okay, I know this object, so that's kind of a contract, if you want, between the objects. The first one says, I'm registering with the token 1234. And the other one knows, okay, if I send with 1234, it will reach that particular guy. If I send with 2345, two, he will not receive it. So again, you can minimize the code needed to receive a message. There should be no constraints for a messaging system, in my opinion. If you need to implement an interface to receive a message, in my opinion, you're doing it wrong. Okay. So let's see demos. So the first thing I want to show you is commands, where I'm going to use the normal WPF and Silverlight way to do commands. So here in my XAML code, in my XAML code, I have, oops, here I have one button which is using a property called say hello comment.